Hello and welcome to an episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name's Jacob and today I've got another exciting unboxing video for you guys. So, I've been waiting for this particular package for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's taken a long time to arrive. I've basically got an assortment of figures from the Godzilla store. Somewhere that I've been so keen to buy from for so long and I finally took the plunge and actually did it. Now, buying from the Godzilla store if you don't live in Japan is a little bit tricky because you do need to use an extra service or a third party buyer to actually buy it and then send it over to wherever else in the world you guys happen to live. I live in Australia, as a lot of you guys know. So I had to use a site called Zen Market. And it was my first time actually trying out one of these sites, which was very interesting. Turned out it wasn't too difficult, it seemed to all go smoothly, but damn the bloody prices that these, you know, the sites and the shipping and all of that add up to are bloody annoying. But uh, all of that out of the way, I'm really excited to actually get to this stuff, because the Godzilla store usually has a lot of exclusive items, and I don't even remember all the ones that I bought, because this was so long ago now, but I'm really excited to get to the get to these in general, so let's just jump right in. This I had to uh, have shipped over, that's how, why it took so long in particular, because they're not sending airmail at the moment to Australia, which is bumming me out again, as, as has happened a few times in the past, especially to do with the whole uh, virusy thing that is affecting the globe. So, postage from Japan is a bit iffy. Got our box torn open. Let's see if it's all there and all safe. I think I just have a bunch of Bandai vinyl type figures in here, if I remember correctly. I'm curious how, how this turned out, because they would have had to repackage it and, and all that. So, let's see how they did it. So, what we've got here, got a bunch of newspaper. Newspaper and just crate paper, packing stuff. Very typical. And there we go. Here's our figures wrapped in bubble wrap. So I'll just dump that off camera, and we got, what even is this stuff? Just generic, <laughs> lots, of, lots of random pages from God knows what they use to kind of protect this stuff, but it's actually kind of interesting. I, I like when, when stuff is packed with a lot of just random generic stuff, especially when it's from an international country, because then you can kind of look to it and be like, ah, so that's what a Japanese newspaper looks like, or a magazine, or whatnot. What's more interesting is the actual figures that we're going to have in here, and already I can see we've got something with a long tail. Ooh, something a bit purple looking. I definitely recognize a few of these ones. Let's just jump right in. So, what, what on earth did past Jacob buy here? Let's take a look. So the thing about buying from the Godzilla store is, for in particular stuff like Bandai vinyls, they initially, at least initially, seem like they are much better priced than buying at a place like eBay or something like that. Although, again, like I say, the costs did kind of add up with shipping and just the general cost of the third party service and all that. But I, it was something that I've been meaning to look into for a long time. Which is odd that I haven't, seeing as how many years I've actually been collecting figures primarily from Japan. Regardless. Oh, I know what this is. We got the Ride version. I don't I don't have a better name for it actually, but it's kind of weird just calling it the Ride version, but that's what it is. It's the Bandai Movie Monster series Ride version of Godzilla. I think it's a VR ride in Japan somewhere. It might be in like one of their theme parks there. And they came out with this brand new design of Godzilla and these exclusive figures of that version and these were bloody expensive everywhere on the internet and the cheapest place that I seemed to find them for was the Godzilla store, hence why I actually decided to buy from there. First um, impressions, the Bandai vinyl is actually a lot nicer looking in hand than photos that I've seen of it. It's a little bit more detailed and there is actually some paint on them. There's actually some nice dry brushing on them that does bring out those details a little bit more. He looks a little weird from certain angles, but all around, kind of a cool design. 
Anyway, let me show you guys. So here's a nice close-up look at this guy. I say nice, the lighting's kind of abysmal in these videos that I do without natural light. So I do apologize about that. It does come across as a little bit poorly lit, but detail-wise, yeah, not bad. It's kind of chunky looking from the front, like a very, very broad shaped posture. And he's got a really weird chest. Usually Godzilla's chest is uh, segmented into three segments. He's got sort of like a, a big breastbone in the middle, kind of like most birds would have or something like, like that. But uh, in this version, he's got more of a, I guess, humanoid pecs. <laughs> it's just kind of weird looking on a Godzilla design. But uh, especially if you actually look at the, the video from the ride version, the face actually looks really faithful to something like a Heisei Godzilla. And it's captured fairly well here, although it is a lot smaller and less detailed in this figure version than the real, you know, film version. But I do like the little, little teeth and the way they're painted on this guy. They actually put in a little bit of detail there, which is quite nice paint-wise. With the widened in eyes, no pupil, which is kind of typical for small eyes with Bandai vinyls. But then look at all this detail down the sides of the body and the, and the tail especially as well. It's actually really nicely done. Very cool. Yeah, so I think it looks a little bit derpy from actually the front angle. Something about the shoulders is a little off to me. It's a bit weird looking for a Godzilla design. But overall, pretty cool. I like this figure and I'm, I'm really glad I got to see it in hand and you can see it's got a bit of like a greenish wash or a dry brushing over it which is nice as well. It's, again it's got the very dark spines like you'd, you've seen in most recent incarnations of Godzilla since the 2014 design Shin Godzilla. They've all kind of avoided the bone tipped spikes which I miss because I think especially with uh, if you got figures of these kaiju, having the extra paintwork on the spines looks real nice and it really helps the design pop. But this version just got really dark spines, which eh, it looks okay in, in, in the film that we did see of them. And you can kind of see a little photo there. But I think, I think it would be nicer if they would start implementing more Godzilla designs with the bone colored spines, because I do miss that element kind of different looking feet for a Godzilla design kind of weird looking but uh yeah it works very very jagged thick tail sort of uh, standard size for a Godzilla yeah that's figure number one from this set I'm happy that I finally got my hands on this guy again late to the party with this one as as I will be with a bunch of other figures because yeah, getting these things shipped to Australia is not easy at the moment. What else have we got? Uh, this one I'm excited for. Well, it's not every day you get a, a figure of this kaiju. Although, I have actually got a few of them. This one was one that I bought last minute. It just came out before I got all these shipped to me. So, I'm glad I did because got a special edition Adora figure from the Godzilla store which with like special purple cool paint on them and I've not yet got a Bandai version of Hedora. I, I have the YMSF figure and an X plus of one of his smaller forms but this is my first ever Bandai vinyl of Hedora and actually looks remarkably similar to the YMSF figure sculpt wise and size wise which I'll, I'll bring them in together in a second but wow Bandai Movie Monster Series Hedora made in China Blah, blah, blah. Tohoko LTD, Hedora. Nice. And he's got this cool metallic paint on him. Orange eyes, which, you know, isn't movie accurate, unfortunately. But I do really dig these kind of metallic paint variants that they do of some of these kaiju. Especially Hedora. Hedora tends to get a lot of love when it comes to these really sort of boutique vinyl figures with lots of different paint variants. If you, you're a fan of YMSF figures, you see they're always putting out different color plastic versions and different paint schemes of Hedora because yeah it's just kind of a design that you can mess with a lot uh, creatively and color wise to get some cool stuff out of it. Regardless let's take a nice close look at this guy. So here we go he's cast in a typical sort of uh, black charcoal gray plastic vinyl plastic like all these sort of Bandai figures are comes with the uh, Movie Monster series tag 
as standard with these kind of things. Cool shot of Hedora there in his more natural colors. And yeah, great looking sculpt on this thing. Again, it looks almost identical to the YMSF one, which I'm gonna bring in in a second. Got cool metallic purple and blue hues all over him. Orange eyes, some kind of gold detailing in there as well. And more of that metallic coloration down him. Really striking figure, really cool. Although, on the short side, which a lot of these Hedora figures unfortunately are. Because Hedora is actually a big monster. Godzilla is quite small next to him in his final form. If this guy was to be more accurately scaled, I would want him to be quite a bit bigger. Anyhow, let's bring in the YMSF version. And there's the two together. So my YMSF version is quite faithful color-wise to how he is in the film. But like I said, they do put out lots of weird color variants of this thing all the time. So I do recommend checking those ones out. But this is, again, my first ever uh, Bandai version of Hedora. So this is the Bandai Japan version. I, I'm not sure if this is a new sculpt or if it's the old sculpt that's been out for a while. It's definitely very different to the Bandai Creations version, which uh, a lot of the you guys from the US would be familiar with, which I think is probably the worst Hedora figure out there from what I've seen. It doesn't even really have the tail, which is such a big part of the design. But yeah, take a look at these two. I actually still really prefer the YMSF figure. Uh, this one's cool. It's actually, both of these ones are really, uh, really accurate to how he was in the film, but both size-wise, I'm actually surprised the YMSF figure is actually a bit bigger, because this one is also too small to really scale much with anything. But size-wise and detail-wise, I kind of prefer the sort of contours and the, the sludgy details on the YMSF figure. I think they look I don't know, something about them looks more aesthetically pleasing. I don't, it's a weird thing to describe kind of like a sludgy monster as aesthetically pleasing, but there is some, something about the way the kind of weird folds and shapes of his kind of weird messy body go together that kind of looks really cool on the YMSF version. It's got much wider sort of uh, splodgy shaped feet and tail details. And this guy, over here, yeah, about the same amount of screen accuracy, but just just a little bit smaller and just a little bit less interesting sculpt-wise, I'd say. But both of these figures are really cool, and now I've finally got another Hedora to my collection. So that totals three substantial Hedora figures. I also have a little Gashapon figure knocking about somewhere else, but uh, who knows where that is. But this is my X-Plus version of uh, the earlier form of Hedora. So you can kind of see these ones together. This one should be actually much smaller than these two, which are the final form. But yeah, real cool. So the next figure I'm pulling out is a companion piece to the Ride Godzilla Bandai Vinyl. So this is, of course, uh, you probably guessed to judge by the size and the general shape of this one. This is the Ghidorah that goes with him. I couldn't just get the Godzilla, I had to get the Ghidorah too. So... Let's take a look. So again, these two figures come from what is essentially like a theme park ride version where they have like, you know, the 3D goggles and the VR thing. And you basically experience these two kaiju kind of fighting and you're like in amongst the madness. And that would be something that I would definitely love to see in person one day, but God only knows if and when I could ever go to Japan, especially with, you know, the world as it is these days and travel isn't really a thing that people are doing so much <laughs> but we got a cool new Ghidorah design regardless so let's take a look so this design kind of looks really similar to the prehistoric Ghidorah design from one of the rebirth of Mothra films I don't re quite remember which one but there was a, a version of Ghidorah in those films from the 90s and there was like a, a prehistoric version of that Ghidorah that did look really similar to this thing. And of course it also shares some details with the 2019 version from King of the Monsters of Ghidorah. Here we go. Here is our brand new ride version of Ghidorah. This figure is remarkably similar in build and color and just feel to the 
Bandai Movie Monster series version of the King of the Monsters, King Ghidorah, uh, which, I don't know, it's it's a little underwhelming compared to, again, how this this version of Ghidorah looks on screen. It's a little bit nicer looking, a bit more imposing. But Ghidorah is a really tricky design to kind of translate into a vinyl figure. You really have to make the wings smaller, I guess, to make it worthwhile. And the detailing gets really smushed, as opposed, especially the small detailing of the faces and the heads. And you guys know how Bandai's been lately. They've been pretty skimpy on their paintwork. So this one is isn't even gold. It's just this sort of beige brown tone. And it does actually have a few different hues of brown painted on it here and there. But overall, it does look really similar to that Movie Monster series version of the 2019 Ghidorah, which I found kind of underwhelming. But still, I'm glad to have this in my collection nonetheless as, you know, a collector's piece. And it is pretty much the only representation I think we're likely to get of this Ghidorah on the market. I do like the legs on this thing. He's got the sort of more dragon-like legs, which again are really reminiscent of that prehistoric Ghidorah that I was telling you guys about from that um, Mothra film as well as the more beak-like jaws that this version's got going on. But unfortunately, I don't think they translate too well into the figure form. If we just go real close, you can see there is some detailing there, but the paint doesn't really do it all that much justice. Maybe if a little paint tweak would help that, but it does look kind of mushy. He does have quite a bit of detail work on the back though. Lots of these spikes and all these details running on the back. They are very oddly placed in kind of like a mirror image of each other, which really makes this figure look like it's uh, made using a 3D program, a 3D modeling program, and then, you know, printed out. It just comes across as that vibe with the, just the, the sheer way that these organic details are so perfectly mirrored on either side, and just the shapes they use kind of really remind me of a lot of figures like that. I think hopefully you guys kind of know what I mean. And I did have a similar impression with uh, this Godzilla and a lot of the detail work on him as well. So that's kind of interesting. I mean, obviously these these designs were uh, uh, first CGI creations. So that kind of makes sense. Obviously we should pair these guys together to take a look at how they scale up. And they're... I actually think the Godzilla is a little bit small. I don't really remember this Ghidorah being overly huge next to Godzilla, but Ghidorah's typical and traditionally are fairly substantial in size next to Godzilla and this one even though they slouched it, him over as much as they could and they kind of reduced the size of the wings I still feel like this one could probably be a bit bigger it should stand a bit above Godzilla but nonetheless as far as Bandai vinyl figures go yeah a nice pairing between these two so it's cool to get this little odd bit of Godzilla history in figure form into my collection now it looks like there's one more figure in this box to go and I know exactly what this is so if we take him out we should have a brand new sculpt version of Mechagodzilla which I do not yet have in my collection so this is actually some sort of a, an odd color because uh, you know again they love doing these weird sort of color variants of things of a Mechagodzilla in particular the 1975 Terror of Mechagodzilla design, done in a metallic cyan teal, whatever color you call this, weird sort of aqua blue green color. And I don't actually own a Bandai version of this Mechagodzilla. I got an X plus of him actually just over here, uh, but up till now I've only had the 74, which is my favorite design actually of Mechagodzilla, but they're so close to being identical that I do love the 75 as well. I saw this thing, I thought the colors were amazing, the sculpt looked great, and it just... Ah, definitely, definitely looks like a cool figure. Ah, nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Unfortunately, I don't actually have the 1974 Mechagodzilla to compare this guy to, the Bandai, because, uh... Uh, a lot of you may or may not know I moved a little while ago, and I haven't actually brought over all my figures as of yet. I don't know if I 
will or will not, but I haven't brought over all my sort of Bandai vinyls. But this guy looks awesome. Just box falling. But this guy looks awesome. So first of all, I'm digging the color the color of him. I actually don't mind that he's not movie accurate at all. I kind of I think it really helps this guy stand out on the shelf. But the first thing I notice is that the sculpt is really nice and sharp and really well proportioned and looks really accurate to the film actually more so than the 74 figure from what I remember. That one had a kind of weird looking head proportions and something about the face was a bit off and I think my version was the Bandai Creations version anyway so I don't think I ever got the official Bandai Japan version of the 74 but even compared to that I think this one would stack up nicely because yeah just a great looking figure I'm gonna bring him in close for you guys to see because I just want to show off the face on this thing he's just got such a badass look to him really love this version if you kind of want to know the difference between the 74 and the 75, uh, they have a lot of different detail work around the body here because they have all these, like uh, in particular you can see around about here, these details where it looks more lightning boltish going down the sides here, these panels. Those are completely different on the 74. I think the shoulders are also different. And obviously on the side here, this one says MG2. The original Mechagodzilla didn't have the two there, obviously. And there's a couple of other little subtle variants throughout the body of these. And uh, also difference in the hands is, is another thing. I think this version has sort of bigger hands, longer fingers and stuff like that. I don't know if the color is coming at accurate on camera. It's looking a little bit more blue on camera from what I'm seeing on my monitor here. But in, in reality, it's a little bit more teal, more green toned. But I love that, that metallic color. It's really cool. Nice detailing, some legal information on the feet there. Really cool. And the tag is kind of an interesting color. It's this really pale, uh, same teal color. It's just got real pale print on it. So it looks kind of faded, but it goes with the figure really nicely. Got red detailing in his mouth, which is kind of odd for a mecha figure, but it does help the teeth stand out, so I appreciate that. And the bright yellow eyes which we uh, would come to expect for this Mechagodzilla. This might be my favorite figure from this batch actually and I was uh, on the fence about getting this guy actually when I was uh, ordering these things but I actually really dig this one. Uh, unfortunately again the only Mechagodzillas I can compare him to right now, at least 70s ones, is the Monster Arts because I, again I didn't bring my Bandai vinyl and you can see this is the 74 Monster Arts. A little bit shorter uh, details are a little bit different on these two. Again, if we look at the chest details, very different on the 74 here and then the 75. Again, the more lightning bolt shapes and just a cool, few little things moved around and changed around here and there. But uh, both of these are great, great Mechagodzilla figures. I said this was the X Plus. I'm wrong. This is actually a Billiken kit. So this is a model kit version, but it's basically an X plus figure in practice. It's the same size, detail, quality, all that stuff as a 30 centimeter X plus figure. So here we go. Yeah, really both great versions of this guy. And I think they really knocked this Bandai uh, vinyl out of the park because the detail work is really, really close to even even the quality and the uh, the proportions and all that of this big uh, kit version here, which is pretty damn suit accurate, even down to all the little wrinkles in the suit and stuff like that, which I love when they do on these figures. That just makes it a lot more, a lot more accurate to the suits, a lot more, a lot more cooler, and and just faithful to the films, and a really good attention to detail from these guys. So yeah, I'm digging this one. I would really like a, a movie, movie accurate variant of this guy as well. That would be pretty cool, but. Happy with this guy as is. So yeah, that's my unboxing video and initial sort of thoughts on these figures and my whole haul of stuff from the Godzilla store. I'm really happy with these. I think they're all really awesome, unique collector's pieces that again, would have been a pain to get anywhere else but from the, direct from the Godzilla store. I'm glad I tried it out and I'll probably be trying out using those sort of uh, after, not aftermarket, but 
uh, third party sites again like Zen Market to try and buy from other retailers in Japan and possibly from the Godzilla store again in future. But uh, yeah, I really hope Japan sorts out their postage issues at the moment with sending stuff to Australia because I'm sick of waiting for weeks and weeks and weeks for stuff to be just literally shipped over as opposed to uh, airmail, which seems to be on and off between Australia over the last few years. So fingers crossed they sort that stuff out. And again, thank you for watching this video and bearing with my rambling while going through these figures. Yeah, I hope to see you in my future videos. But until then, may your vinyl be a radiated vinyl. Over and out. Bye.